Good morning, everyone. I'm Dave Thompson. I am the author of The New Generation of Cleaning, a book I wrote a number of years ago. Uh, and yes, that is my granddaughter at that time in the mop bucket. Of course, being in the custodial industry all my life, what do I have in the garage? But something that's colorful and holds water. Every three-year-old, four-year-old child likes that to start with, right? I am the director of the Academy of Cleaning Excellence. I'm from Orlando, Florida. Anyway, I am a tenured professor of health and safety for custodians. I live, eat, and breathe for the health and safety of our frontline workers that are unsung and underappreciated. What you just saw is the Rockstar Custodian Program. Every year we nominate people from all around the world, and at the start of every year, we recognize that person. And that was the 2021 winner uh, and a little bit of their program. I want you to finish this statement. The most valuable asset of any operation is? Custodians is a good answer, but wrong. Go ahead. People, yeah, you're getting there. Clean facilities. Ah, well, that's, see, we, we, we have a good idea. The whole thing is, is I want to try to get us all on the same page this morning. Good morning. Good morning. There we go. Finish my statement. You can't do it. You know why? Because we all have different viewpoints. And when you're trying to recognize a rock star custodian, I want to try to help you focus, and here's what I say. What's the difference between people and employee or an engaged employee. What you just did. I made you get engaged. I made you react. This is the problem. As long as I've been in the cleaning industry, we have a revolving door of employment. It just spins and spins and spins. And we need people to stay. And right now, you're probably all feeling that effect. You don't have people. And you want to keep the people. So let's try to do that. How many of you have started a presentation that way? Well, that's great. What did you do? Participate. What? Participate. Engaged. That's your word for this morning, right? We need engaged employees. I want you to be engaged with this presentation this morning. All right? So, to be a rock star custodian, you know what? As long as I've been in doing this, which is, this is my 50th year in the cleaning industry. Yeah, it's funny how everybody has a different viewpoint of what makes a rock star. You know, that standout person. Well, we've got nine personality traits that we've identified that we want you to use. And as you saw the award that we gave out, the National Rockstar Custodian is based on these nine personality traits. If you have a blank piece of paper and pen, you're going to want to write some of this down. Now, I've also given you permission to use your cell phone. You can take pictures of my slides. Please do not take video. Understand? We all good? Yeah. All right. Whoa, well, let's start by what's the word custodian mean? Jeez, come on. How many people are here custodians or supervisors custodians? You don't know what the word means? This is the problem. And it's universal. Everybody thinks it means something, but nobody knows exactly. So, you know, if you're in this profession and you want respect, we should know what the word means. Problem is, we don't. A person who has responsibility for or looks after something. At 13, I had the keys to the school. Not too many 13-year-olds could say that at that time. I had respect. I had keys. Do you ever think about that? Why is it the word custodian means subpar basement? Because we've let society do it to us. I don't do that. And neither should you. So, the first 
letter in custodian is C. What does that stand for? You may have a long morning. Cleaner. Cleaner. Good try. Care. Care. That's a good one. I like it. Not right. Communication. If you do not communicate right, if they do not communicate with you, if you do not communicate correctly, articulately, and with purpose, what's going to happen? This is the key to any level of custodial work. Would everybody agree with that? There has to be proper communication or it fails. If you're a manager, how are we communicating? If you're a lead custodian, how are you communicating with the rest of your staff? Sometimes I find it's not very good. However, as you think about your rock star custodian this morning, I want you to think about that person. Do they communicate or do they respond to gobbledygook? You know, you give a custodian a bunch of data, data-driven information, you see this glazed look come over their face. Give them a spreadsheet. Huh. Spreadsheet, hey, I saw you shaking your head. Spreadsheets don't work, do they? No, they don't. No. But I need to communicate what's on that spreadsheet. That doesn't mean I don't need it, but that's not my best form of communication. But on the other hand, oh, wait a minute, here we go. We've got a whole group of people coming in. We've got 500 people coming in. By the way, you've got to tear up, set up, tear down, and do all your rest of your job. Oh, by the way, that happens in two hours. Oh, I saw some smiles back there. I saw some smiles. Why? Have you heard that before? Hopefully you're not going to set that. Is that a rock star communication? You see what I'm saying? No. We recognize that when I say it that this way. But the problem is, is when we actually get in the heat of the battle, how many times does this happen? Or something somewhere. We're not looking for that. On the other hand, we've all used paper calendars, correct? Mm -hmm. Who's passed paper calendars? We all still use paper calendars? Mm -hmm. Who's passed paper calendars? We use electronic ones, right? Man paper. Question is, who do you share them with? Just your own little pe group of people? Problem is, if nobody knows what's on your calendar, how are they supposed to respect what you do? Does the superintendent know about it? Does the school board know about it? Does the nurse know about it? The bus drivers? You're saying, well, hey, wait, oh, oh, yeah, wait, why, why should they all know? Accountability. If you want respect in this business, you have to let people know what you're doing. Or they're going to make that assertion. We're basically the out of sight, out of mind. Let people know what's on your calendar. How are you supposed to get communication if you don't? Sounds like I'm barking. I'm passionate about what I do. You. What's you? Quickly. Oof. Understand. 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 Well, that's a very good one. And whenever I looked at this gentleman's list of things, by the way, I didn't write all this. I'm like, I didn't make it either. I was wrong too. What are you here at this conference today for? To get information, right? You're here to, oh, wait. Oh, that's it. There's Google. YouTube. You can YouTube anything, right? By the way, I want to let you know, I've got 300 videos on YouTube. Every one of them is perfectly correct. You should have been by everyone who looked at the letter of the law, right? No. Why did you laugh? I said, you have to quit. Just quit laughing. Why did you go out of my mouth? Why? Why? Because that's what everybody thinks. A lot of people think, but it's not necessarily true. But I'm a professor of health and education for custodians. Why are you saying I'm wrong? Here again, just like you said, everybody's got a different idea. It's a resource. 
That's what we want to do. Now, the thing is, here, you're here to network with people and get those resources, correct? That's what we're here for. However, you're not here every day of the year. So what about working with other school districts in the area? People that have the same challenges. They, I mean, you know, it's pretty <coughs> universal. I was in Florida, I, you know, from Orlando. I was in Florida last week doing this presentation. They said, but you don't understand. Oh, yes, I do. It's awesome. A little different twist, a little different this. But you know what the biggest thing is? Custodians don't want to ask questions because it makes them look dumb. Oh, I should already know that. I'm a supervisor. I'm a lead. I'm a manager in that department. I should already know that. Come on, folks. I'd rather look ignorant in front of you than to the school board. Correct? Got me? Don't be afraid to ask questions. Reach out to others. That's what resources are about. Everybody with me? Now, have you got somebody in mind already that meets those first two? Anybody got a rock star in mind? <coughs> Thinking about it? Yeah. Baldy's got one. Hey, you put your name up there, so I'm going to use it. I hate S. What's the red letter S? Ah. <laughs> Actually, that's a white letter on a red sign. Come on. Service. Service. Support. He was close. Service to others. If you're in a public school, you are there simply and solely there as a custodian of health to service others. Get over it. This is the concept. You are not there to clean. You are not there to disinfect. You are there to serve those children, those teachers, those parents that use that facility. What is this gentleman doing right here? You don't need to look. What I just get through telling you. Serving others. You see, the thing is, is we get caught up on, oh, well, is that a disinfectant or is that a window cleaner or is he using microfiber? I don't care. I'm looking for a rock star custodian that understands that they're there to serve others. That is their job. The rest of us just the minutia of what we do. Understand what I'm saying here? We have a job. I get that. You'll learn all about that down there in the hall. What I'm talking about is that person, that personality trait that makes them who they are. We can't embrace kids like this anymore, correct? But we can mentally do this. We can emotionally do this. You know, I got my start in uh, custodial because the high school custodian broke both legs in an accident. Superintendent came to me with a big roll of keys and said, hey, he tells me from his bed that you know how to use these keys and what to do with all the stuff and how to clean our building. I have no idea why I knew that. But somewhere along the way, that man impressed me. And I've been on a 50-year career. You see what I'm saying? That's what I'm talking about. To this day, I still don't know why, but I thank him every day. I've been able to travel around the world, talk to hundreds of thousands of people, have education for all kinds of custodians, and help change lives. That's why. That's a rock star custodian. T. Teamwork. Everybody says that. You know, that's a very popular wrong answer. Training. Training is one of the ones that comes up too, but not the one I'm looking for. But good try. Hey, somebody in the front row actually had something to say. <laughs> See? So would it be treat, treat others good, well, respectful? See, now you're thinking. You see how this changed in just a few letters? Now you're thinking further than just the, what we do. You're thinking about the person. I always tell people in my classes all the time, the tool I'm here to work with is this one right here. This is the most important tool. Take ownership. I take ownership of being a custodian. Do you believe me? There is nobody that has ever told me I can do what I do. 
Does that, is that rockstar custodian starting to really boil up in your head now? Do you know this person? Write it down. Come on. Write your name down on paper. Piece of paper you got. It's, I told you this was going to be an engaging session, right? I don't see pins going. I don't see pins going. Got it? Oh, my. Oh, gee. Anybody ever back their cells in the corner? Yeah, uh huh? Yeah, if you've done this job long enough, you're going to screw up. Wait a minute, you shook your head real quick back there. I saw that great gap going back for it. Yeah, uh huh? You know, just take ownership of it. <clears throat> this person just takes ownership, says, okay, yeah, we did. But we learned from it, right? I can guarantee you. Nobody taught me how to do what I do. I make some mistakes and go, woo, I can do it. And then I've learned some things. I go, hey, that worked. We're all done that, right? This person does that. Nobody's perfect. Go ahead and do it. The problem is society only sees the screw-ups. Why is that? Because we do not profess who we are. I asked this morning who looked up what, what was a custodian. They all didn't know what the answer was. See? We're the ones that have to change the public's perception of who we are. That's what we're hoping to do. You ever stop to notice where these people that just kind of, uh, you know, have this, you know, it's not my job mentality, you know, how they just kind of, I don't know, where do they wind up at? Well, in Mike Ward's book, the author uh, that authored all of this material, he says they end up in that class of the lazy gender. And unfortunately, this is what the public hears, sees, and knows, and relegates us to. Everybody agree with that? Why is that? Because we let it happen. Nobody else to blame but ourselves. Why? Because Call can't get on the same page. And that's what we're here this morning to help you do. Let's all get together and go on the same page and have a unified front as to what it takes to be that rock star standout custodian. So, you do have that person written down, right? I keep asking the question, right? Yeah, he's smiling back at me over there. Does anybody have two people written down? Uh-huh, see? Is this being helpful? Uh-oh. Shall I ask that again? Is this being helpful? Yes. Oh, okay. All right. Okay. Phew. I'm scared there for a moment. You know what to do? Let's see if you were paying attention. Anybody see what's happening? Tell me. Engaged. Engaged? Yes. And? Shared knowledge, kind of common knowledge, everybody's on the same page. Common knowledge that we're all together, we can all speak the same language. Yeah. So when somebody asks you what happened in this, this class this morning. Oh, no. You play games? <laughs> I have no idea what happened. <laughs> you see, the thing is, is when you walk out of here, I want you to have these nine traits that you can take home with you and you can use. Now, you know, somebody's always going to come up with something that they think is better. And I'm not okay. I, I'm not okay. I am okay with that. But the thing is, is, as long as I've been doing this, I've searched and searched and searched for that criteria to help everybody get together. Because this has been always my problem. We all have a different direction, a different thought. Let's go a different way. And no wonder nobody knows who we are and what we do. Because if you talk to somebody, they go, well, I, they said you do this, and they said you do this, and you know, you ask somebody where they clean the toilet, a bathroom with, and it's 20 different things. Why can't we all do the same thing? I'm not getting into the minutia of doing our job. I'm more concerned about the person. Everybody understand that's the message this morning? Because as you said, the people are the most important. But I want 
somebody that's engaged for the right reasons. I'm looking for the rock star. Who would like to have, to use the word that you used, a whole team of rock stars? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Right? So you've got a person or two written down. Let's see if it stays the same. Because now we're talking optimistic. I am optimistic by the end of this morning that you will have the nine traits to go and work with. I am also optimistic that you'll use them. Maybe I'm overly optimistic. <laughs> we'll find out later, huh? But how many times have you heard something like, if I have to set up 100 chairs and I have to take them down, I won't be able to get my job done? Yeah, we've heard it. <laughs> maybe, maybe once. <laughs> oh, just once? Just once. Just once. Is that good communication? You've never heard that before I heard you say? Yeah, I think he lied. <laughs> <laughs> Through all the teeth he's got, he lied. Well, what I hear um, from the best of our people, like the rock stars we, we think about in our minds, um, what I have seen in the past is those teams that work really well together, that's a non -starter. That's a non-starter. Yeah, they just do it because it's part of what they do. It's not extra. It's just they understand going into it that they're doing setups for games and they're doing teardowns and they're going back to their areas. So they don't necessarily view that as additional work. They view it as part of their work. And that's what I'm talking about. We have those people that just do, right? Not this guy. <laughs> you know, I really wish I could tell you this was a stage photo, but it's not. I actually took this photo. Uh, of course, I was promptly kicked out of the university because that's not what I was supposed to be inspecting and finding out. But the gentleman did tell me one thing, which I thought was very unique. He said, don't wake him up. <laughs> as long as he stays asleep, he's got a job. When he's awake, he's fired. Unfortunately, folks, this is that gender-minded person that the, that the public thinks about when they think about us. We are the ones that let it happen. I want you to recognize your rock star custodian, and this is the person I want everybody to know about. Feel me? Because if we don't do it, who's going to? Nobody. This is what they're always going to say. This is what they're going to relate to us. The thing, the word janitor does not mean this. By the way, do you know what the word janitor means? Huh? Look it up. I'm not going to show you and tell you. Uh, you thought that was coming right? Uh, I ain't going to do it. After all, Optimism is always possible. Just what you were saying, sir. I can, I will, no problem. I'll get it done. We don't even talk about it. That's the person that the public needs to know about. Anybody got an idea what D is? Dedicated. Dedicated. Close. Very close. That's why I asked, because I thought I heard something, but I want to make sure. Very close. Huh? Driven. Driven. Dedicated, driven. Boy, you're trying to go all around. You're going all around it. Determined. Now, you might choose your own words, like she's doing right there, right? I don't have a problem with that. But for our Rockstar Award, you've got to go by these. Now, of course, there are all variations of right? But I am determined to go around the country and do what I can do to make sure that people recognize our profession is of value. Of course, I will say the pandemic did a lot for us in the last couple of years. And that way, people recognize. I was interviewing a guy last night, and he said, hey, people recognize who we are now. We have value. Unfortunately, it took a pandemic to bring value, but let's keep it going. A determined custodian, you know, will have that clean area, clean school. 
It's just going to be what they do. Just as you said, sir, a minute ago. It's just what happens. We know who that person is. This gentleman here with the stripes on his shoulder is highly overqualified to be reading a dinosaur book. On the other hand, he came back to the school that gave him his start. These are the people that want to let other people know about their career, the career that they chose. This is what I do. I go around the country. I have no problem telling people I'm a janitor, that I'm a custodian. I love it. Dirt is my life. Also, in our business, if it doesn't suck, you don't want it. Come on! I can back it a little bit. Right? If a vacuum doesn't suck, do we want it? No. Okay, all right, come on. You know, back in the high school days, I was on the track a lot. I went back to the school where I ran track and everything. There's my trophies in the trophy case and the ribbons up there. Hey, fine. But I also had teachers that said, yeah, I remember you cleaned school. I ain't going to tell you how long ago that was. You see, you're going to leave your mark. You're the one that's going to decide what mark you're going to leave. If you think about it, it will happen. As I said, nobody said I can do this. And the reason I'm talking about me is I'm just telling you from my own experience, folks. I'm not saying I'm anything perfect. I'm not. I'm not anything great. I just know what I want out of life. And I know what give, gave it to me. And i got to give it back. I? Integrity. No, it doesn't stand for me. Integrity. Integrity. Absolutely. Give him, give him a grab of applause. First one to get the right answer. And he's on the front row, too. You know, how many custodians just are out there doing their thing all night long? Nobody around. Nobody watching. Those good, strong, moral values of I'm going to do it. I'm going to do the right thing. I'm going to do it the right way. Because they understand they're there to serve others and to provide a healthy, safe atmosphere and environment for everybody to use. They're going to follow the directions. You don't have to talk to them. You understand that rock star custodian is this person. Agree? We recognize this person. This is our first rock star national award winner. Uh, Miss Nikki, as she's known there at the school, um, yeah, we interviewed countless people. Uh, the news station came and interviewed her and a whole bunch of people. First time she'd ever been interviewed on TV. You know, you're talking about integrity. You know, we found out a whole lot. I went back to her uh, two years later, interviewed her again. She's moved up the ranks and now is in a different position. You see, that's... I got chills. You know, and, yeah, it, it's so great to see that come out of a person when you give the opportunity to shine a light. Honest, trustworthy. Yeah, you know, we have a choice to be who we are. Your rock star custodian, this isn't a taught thing. I'm not saying that we can't sway decisions and, and personalities. But basically it's something in there. If you're in that rock star supervisor category that we talk about in our other three sessions, we actually talk about how to bring that out of certain people, how to recognize that in those certain people. Many supervisors in our industry have never been taught how to work with people. They're only a supervisor because they were the last one there when everybody said roll call for supervisor. Right? Oh, you could clean toilets real well, so now you're the supervisor. <coughs> but we never teach them how to work with the personalities of the people that are on their team. And that's what we do in that Rockstar Supervisor, because this will help them both personally and professionally. And this is what the Rockstar program is all about, the people. So I've got two letters left. When I was working through this with Mike Ward in his book, and my wife was over 
you know, 25 years, she's seen everything I do. She had another name for what was here. No, wait a minute. Why are you laughing? I saw that smile on your face. It wasn't analyzed, but she agrees with this. I super analyze everything. Because the more data that I understand and know, then I can put that into my computer banks. And my job as a supervisor is to work with those that I engage with to help them do the same thing. Not everybody has the ability to analyze things. I see, I watch, it's just a part of things I do. My wife gets so aggravated at it. Your rock star custodian is analyzing everything because they have to deal with this pep rally and all of the things. They don't see the kids, right? What do they see? The mess. The mess. Which may be what? Truth. Huh? Truth. Uh, it's trash. And they're not supposed to. It was interesting. There's a big sign that says, no food or drink in the gym. Mm -hmm. right. 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 So why do they even have a sign up there? It's for show. We have the science fair, whatever fair it is, right? Do they see all of the booths or what do they see? Tables. Yes. Tables and chairs, all of the things that I said, right? They're analyzing all this. A rock star custodian has been waiting for this to happen. They've already experienced it, correct? They already know what to do, as you said. They're prepared for this. They've analyzed everything that's going to happen. What about the school board meeting? There's a different preparation for this. There's a different follow-up after this. Levels of cleanliness and health may change. Do you really walk around and, you know, you've got somebody there policing it? You've got to make sure that they're doing the right thing because they could be on public display. Right? So, rock star supervisor analyzing everything. Oh, let's get to the real mess. Everybody agree? Yeah. Our rock star custodian has analyzed every one of these situations, knows what to do, doesn't <coughs> let it be a problem, and is there before you are. I see a lot of heads nodding, right? They're a critical thinker. You know, it took me a few years before I started learning this lesson. But once I started learning that lesson, things got so much easier. Not everybody has that ability. Okay, we're down to the last letter. What time is it, by the way? 9.15. Good, we're on schedule. I got 15 minutes. Nurture. Nice. In? Nurture. What? Nurture. Absolutely. Give him a round. Come on. See, by the end of this, we actually got two people that came up with the right answer the first thing, right? See where I'm going? See how it happens? You know, these are the people that realize something's going on, they go a little extra step, somewhere along the line, that custodian, when I was 13, did this for me. I don't know what it was. He probably didn't have any idea either. It's just who he was. But, he sent me on that journey. Somewhere along the line, Miss Nikki said the same thing. She said, she knew, who, she knew who it was. She knew what was going on. And when we nominated, they, they nominated her, and the people came and interviewed her, and then we put her up on this stage, had 350 cheering kids, two news stations, gave her the awards. She will always be the first National Rock Star Award winner, and she will tell you every time. She's got that trophy sitting by her desk. She's darn proud of it. If you go to our YouTube channel, you can see the whole interview with her and where she's advanced to. It's inspiring. Now you have the nine personality traits that we've identified that makes this rock star custodian. We believe that every staff member that you have, it would be a good thing for them to strive to be this way. You know, the interesting thing is I've done this for professors, for our superintendents, 
I've done this and had, uh, when I was in Baltimore, I had uh, medical people in, involved. They all say, you know what? This isn't just a custodian. This is a person. And that's what we're talking about. We all should strive to be like this. Use some of these. Now, has that person you wrote down changed? Have you added to it? That's what I'm talking about. Because I want you to scan this code. You've got it right on the front of your sheet right there. You scan that code, you're going to go to the nomination form. It is free for anybody to use. Anybody can nominate anybody. Through the end of October, we're taking national uh, nominations. The first of October, we'll, we'll either pick uh, anywhere from four to eight. We'll put them out for nationwide voting. It's up to you. You've got it in your hands. I've just simply given you the foundation. By the way, this is the award and the plaque that we hand out. This is Mr. Ron Crowley. education. We have an online program here at the Academy of Cleaning Excellence. Uh, everything is the Rockstar program from onboarding to uh, the technician, expert, and even a master level. All online, available online. Uh, if you go to our website, you can learn that. On the other hand, we also have Rockstars of Cleaning live presentations. Now we were doing this way before COVID hit, so we actually can do these remote or if you want to travel to the sunny state of Florida, we'd love to have you there. Um, there's a difference between education and skills training. I learned this through my career. Education is what we were doing this morning, working with this tool here. You know, in my profession, if we don't understand why we're doing it, then the skills training goes awry. So the classes always start with, why am I doing what I'm doing? And then taking a look, is there a different way? Sometimes that's better. Sometimes it's already what you're doing. 